It's overcast. This is a global operation, and it affects everybody and every living thing. So this is that important. There are arguments put forth that chemtrails or these man-made clouds are all normal due to the right atmospheric conditions, but this is not a reasonable argument. Uh, the fact is that the introduction of fine uh, chemicals or aerosols into the atmosphere have a profound effect on cloud formation. Unfortunately, this is not taken into consideration by scientists to explain the phenomenon that we are all witnessing. Can particles influence the formation of clouds? I went to Geneva to visit CERN, where scientists study how particles and radiation influence the formation of clouds. We assume that there are man-made effects influencing today's formation of clouds through humans' direct introduction of various particles into the atmosphere, and these particles then serving as condensation nuclei for the formation of clouds, which influence the climate because the properties of clouds, how long they persist, and how much sunlight they reflect, that changes. Depending on how much additional man-made aerosols are put into the air. The Soviet climatologist Mikhail Budiko had the idea of imitating what volcanoes do and putting sulfur particles in the stratosphere, and this was around 1974. Then uh, that was pretty much left on the table until the late 1980s when Edward Teller and his colleagues started introducing uh, various geoengineering ideas. Now, Edward Teller is known as the father of the hydrogen bomb and the, uh, one of the chief architects of the Star Wars missile defense system in the 1980s. I wanted to work on theoretical physics, not on weapons, until the day I heard President Roosevelt speak. And he said that if scientists in the free countries won't work, Freedom will not survive. And I had the irrational, strange, but powerful feeling that he was talking to me. That is when I made up my mind, and I have not changed it since. Teller said we'll never cooperate to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So he designed a whole bunch of sophisticated particles that could be put in the stratosphere or could block some sunlight. And he was looking at ways both to cool the earth and to warm the earth. And so this, uh, you know, and, and so this tradition of these geoengineering proposals coming out of the, the secretive, nefarious military industrial complex has given, a, let's just say, a public relations challenge to these options. The chemtrail speculations are based on a patent from 1991 to reduce global warming. The particle seeding should be done at an altitude on the order of 10 kilometers. The particles may be seeded by dispersal from seeding aircraft. They can One be technique anything. may be via the jet fuel. It's not so complicated. Step up here and I'll show you. See this little trigger here? That's a part of the pen we write with. When the trigger is pulled back, it opens a valve which permits chemicals to shoot out into the exhaust pipe. The exhaust pipe, being just about red hot, heats up the chemicals and makes the smoke you see from the ground. In 1992, the National Academy of Sciences recommended various geoengineering methods to fight global warming. One proposed method to reflect sunlight was to maintain a cloud of dust in the lower stratosphere by the use of aircraft. In the 1990s, Edward Teller and his co-scientists were lobbying for the application of geoengineering. 
He argued that the cost for geoengineering would only constitute 1% of what greenhouse gas reduction would cost. In 2001, Edward Teller's geoengineering methods were mentioned in the IPCC World Climate Report. By reflecting 2% of the sunlight, we could emit twice as much CO2 till 2050. Five years later, Nobel Prize laureate Paul Crutzen reintroduced the old concept of saturating the stratosphere with sulfates in order to cool the planet. From then on, geoengineering was no longer a taboo in science. In 2009, the Royal Society published a report on geoengineering. The foreword states that if CO2 reductions achieve too little too late, then there will surely be pressure to consider a plan B to counteract the climate effects of greenhouse gas emissions by geoengineering. They could be spraying anything. Already if we use our common sense, the link is totally clear between the chemtrails and the aluminum content in the air and the diseases mainly of children. When babies are born, they do not have a blood-brain barrier, any protection. The inhaled aluminum ends up directly in the brain and is one of the main reasons for the whole neurological problems we see with kids. The number of children with neurological problems is rising exponentially in a clear correlation with the spraying in the sky. There is a lot of circumstantial evidence, but it would be relatively cheap if any government agency just flew behind the planes and collected the air. But so far, it is left to individuals like us to spend their own resources on providing the evidence, and that's a scandal. We do not have the slightest indications that chemtrails are real. There are only statements based on see the messing with the heavens now it's sixes and sevens man we never learn our lessons and we never gave our blessings to mess around with our clouds now we're wind out with this shroud that is poisoned in the ground i'm getting loud because we need to stop this betrayal and every breath i inhale is tainted by chemtrails causing summer skies to hail and your organs to fail if your soul is for sale you should be locked up in jail you're looking pale checking that the skies are clear but if you watch a little longer see those white lines appear causing Lies and fear, cause our demise is near But if your mind stays sincere Then your prize will one day in here